talk next Thursday. Anybody who's interested in the backstories, in how the work is made, a little bit more detail, you'd be very, very welcome to come along uh, next Thursday. But just a little bit of an introduction. Uh, this is the second of five shows uh, this year uh, that I'm putting together with work that I've made over the last seven hundred years. Um, I'm really delighted to have the opportunity to show this work in Ireland. I've been showing it for a number of years abroad, and uh, I think I got a little tired of uh, submitting work and finding it and was rejected for one reason or another. And uh, very surprised that this year I got an opportunity um, for a lot of this work to, uh, to be shown around Ireland. Um, so this is the second show. The theme on this is relationship, and I've been bringing together uh, work that I've done, uh, said over about the last seven years, so a bit up to the last month or two. The last couple of pieces are very recent, um, and uh, so there is a theme running throughout all of this. Um, in terms of relationships, uh, I guess I, I, I've been in one for 40 years, the same woman. <laughs> and that's one side of the story. You know? Another side of my own story is that I came from a family that uh, uh, got married frequently and separated frequently. And, uh, you know, so there's a lot of fragmentation and things like that. So, I'm, I'm very interested. I'm, I'm also interested in the very general sense in, in what I would call contemporary uh, mythology. And people tend to think mythology is something archaic, it's something about the Romans or the Greeks or whatever. I tend to look on it in another, uh, with another definition, which is that we're looking at the essential truths of what is happening in the society. And you can either uh, find that, as said, in, in ancient myths and legends, in terms of relationships, for instance, Tristan and Isolde was one of the, uh, the, 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 the amazing uh, piece of myth that came forward when suddenly people uh, realized that they didn't have to marry the person that the parents of the right to. And you could actually say that some of this work is still reflecting the conflict as a result of that. The idea that we actually can choose our partners, that we actually will fall in love and we will, uh, we will stay with the, with the same person. But and so I'll be going into a lot, I, I, I'm hoping to engender a lot more discussion around these things on the night as well. So it won't just be me talking and whatever. So next Thursday, that whole question of, of myth, what does myth actually mean in our society? Um, so another aspect of the show that I just want to draw your attention to is the fact that, and it follows on in a way from myth, I suppose, uh, for me trying to tell, uh, trying to get so, make some contribution to what are the essential features of the, the age that we live in, uh, is not to be, uh, become an incredibly bright person and read all these sort of books on psychology and all this sort of thing, but actually to just try to, to get to know people a lot and, and to talk to people a lot and say, you know, what's, what's going on in your life? And uh, so an awful lot of the work that you see on the walls here is the result of, uh, of long discussions, of sitting down with people and saying, so what's, what, what's, what's going on in your life? You know, um, what are the things that have happened uh, and how do you feel about them? <coughs> and reflecting that on how is that different? We're going through a, 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 an age of tremendous flux in terms of the way we, we see relationships. I mean, in this society, in a very short space of time, we have, uh, you know, we have divorce, we have uh, uh, gay marriage, we have, you know, all these sort of things that, that are redefining the way that uh, we can relate to each other and hopefully relate to each other without shame or difficulty. You know? So, um, you know, actually getting down and, and, and talking to people about what does that mean to them. Um, not all the work is that way. And in some cases, it didn't take very much. You know? I'm not thinking, the first thing that comes to mind in my case is, is thinking about uh, a woman that I shot five times during her pregnancy. Uh, and uh, you didn't really need to talk an awful lot about that. It was just, wow. Look what's happening, <laughs> you know. And uh, you know, uh, so there wasn't an awful, a huge amount of dialogue at all, and that's come through in in spaces. There's the, there's some pictures that are just about you know, geez, isn't it isn't it great to be in love, isn't it? <laughs> and sometimes it's it's absolutely uh, you know the most difficult thing you can do as well. So my job 
if you like, was just to try to facilitate that, try to draw it out. And because I do it all the time, you get better. You know, I dispute this idea of, of talent. I have to say, personally, I don't think talent is an issue. I think it's what happens if you love what you do. If you really love what you do, you're going to do loads of it. I find it hard to stop. So my discipline is give myself, you know, get a life. You know, get out of the studio. You know. Uh, but, so you, you, you do it a lot. And the more you practice it, the more you get used to sort of facilitating people and then actually making, physically making it work. And, uh, and I'm, I'm pleased with how it's evolved. Uh, and I'll go into that in, the, in this uh, talk a little bit as, as well. Not, not this one, but on the other How do I actually piece this stuff together? It's done in a lot of different ways. But, uh, the final thing that I want to just raise here uh, is the question that uh, I'm sure you might have noticed that the body figures very prominently in the book. <laughs> and that is a, that's a big issue in our society. Right? Yeah. It's a very big issue. And we're, again, in a huge transition. And I think the very fact that I've gotten to these five shows in the one year here shows that there's a transition in the way people are prepared to, to view the body. Um, and uh, we have, on one hand, a, a situation where there's an enormous shame of that body for a very long time. And uh, I think there are certainly a lot of opinions saying that that was a very unhealthy thing to happen. And the people that were actually spreading the most shame were not necessarily uh, living up to the idea of what they were doing. So there, you have that on one hand, and then you get this wild swing to the other the extent where you've got pornographers. Uh, I don't quite know how to use the words, but it, it's, not a, it's not much of an honoring of the body. It doesn't treat the body as something that, that your, your soul lives in. You know. um, so you've got shame, and then you've got uh, an element of, uh, I guess, exploitation. Because very often it's just used to make money. There's no other real reason behind it. You know, that's a deal with something that we can sell loads of. And we know pornography sells huge amounts. Um, but, but, but like the body doesn't fit. The body really doesn't fit into either of those categories. You know, we don't need to sell it, and we don't need to be afraid, ashamed of it either. You know, and I'm trying to put. Uh, the body forward, and I'm not the only one. Again, the, the, you know, the people that are in these pictures are are willing to to be part of uh, a re-envisaging of the body. Uh, I think I've gone over my, the time. I was there, well over the time, but um, I'm going to just tell you one very brief story because I think it, it really does illustrate a lot of what we're talking about on this particular issue. And I will then just getting on to thank you. And show you this brief. <laughs> but I was in Barcelona in December, and the particular exhibition in the Casa Vecchia had a huge footfall through it. And one of the things that was I, I really got a kick out of watching was couples. An awful lot of them in their kind of uh, I would say late twenties to early forties. This kind of age group, you know. And um, it was part of a group show. And my body work was the very first thing that you did. And you'd find these couples, and you'd be walking along, and you'd find that the, the, the women, as a rule, would start to turn into the work. And, like, and as I talked to them, like, this, is, this is looking at my body in a different way. The men were tending to go, just <laughs> <laughs> like, you've caught me with these magazines under my bed. I'm not supposed to be looking at them. This is all shameful. This is all screwed up. I don't know how to relate to the body. I haven't seen bodies like this, and I don't know how to look at a body in any other way except this. And that was the, it was a very educational thing for me to sort of get that sense that the men have a little bit more of a problem than women do. Because, as I said, I, I found 80% of the people I, I had long conversations with in Barcelona were women. And they were, they were talking about, about how we might re-envisage the body. So, but that'll be a major topic for discussion. I'd really would in, I really want people to come and give their give their opinions. I don't, I'm so not saying I've got it uh, I've got it right. Is there right? I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? I think there's something that it would be great to sort of uh, discuss a little bit more. Um, not that you have to. I'm not going to be putting you on the spot. But there's no quizzes at the end of the, of the, <laughs> of the talk. So anyway, I have talked enough. Um, I, uh, 
I do have some people to thank. I would really like to thank. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank all the people at Signal. They really have been incredibly helpful. Um, and uh, a number of things that were going on, some problems that I had technically and otherwise, and I couldn't have had more support. So it's been, it's been great. Um, the um, the other person I want to ask who's just come in the door in time to be thanked is my son Aaron here. Uh, you will notice some of the work is a distinctly different uh, style, particularly these four panels over here. And uh, Aaron works for quite closely with me um, from time to time. And uh, really this series owes, in terms of its style, of its artistic content, which I think is mind-blowing, owes a lot to Aaron. And there are some other pieces that he's helped me to put together. You'll see there's more overlays, there's more... And you pre, if you look at that tree, for instance, you'll see that the tree is made up of, of, of uh, crow shapes. I mean, you, you have to look at it closely first. It, and he, you see it, and it's like, ch -ch -ch -ch, you know, and he's, 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 and I would be checking each crow, and I'm going up here with this, and then we're going to do this. No, that's not right. I'd never do it. I couldn't do it. So he's brought, he's brought a lot to the work, so thank you very much, Aaron. Um, and uh, someone else I would like to thank very much is Roshin, who has come down from Belfast. Uh, thank you very much. And this is this series that faces you here as well. Um, we had a very intense collaboration. Uh, we were trying to get our heads around something really, really big and, uh, and end up with something visual. So we're doing it. There's a huge amount of talking and, and looking at it from the mythological, you know, uh, studies of where she was uh, doing postgraduate uh, work in folklore studies. And, uh, you know, so you try to get, get a handle on, on a big story like the Morgan. I think we did. I think it's great. I really do. And I'd like to thank Roshi for this huge input. Tell me about the title. It's the Morgan. It's four. Uh, the, 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 the Morgan one, two, three, and four. <laughs> uh, I can tell you more about it again on, if you have time. Uh, anybody who can't make Thursday, give us a buzz. I'll pop down only around the corner. I'm quite happy to go through the work as well. Um, and uh, finally, uh, the person I would also like to thank, and everybody, I know everybody says they do this, and, uh, you know, but, but you know, I would like to thank my wife, Gay. And I'll tell you why. You know, she's had to make this journey with me. We've actually both had to make a journey through a shame-based society, through uh, you know, looking at the body, through looking at, uh, and also through living with somebody who finds it hard to get out of the studio and be, you know, over dedicated. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's that's my word. She doesn't say dedicated. She has another word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Obsessive, I think it might be. <laughs> but but you know, uh, we've made this journey together. We don't necessarily still see eye to eye on some of the things that are going. But 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 you know, uh, it's uh, I, I'm very grateful to have had her. Uh, support and doing all of this. What I want to do now is show you six minutes of video. And the purpose of this really is just to try to bring you a little bit beyond the initial shock value of the body and the various other things that are going on. And, uh, and the music helps. So in, if you want to gather around enough to be able to see it here, um, somebody like to stand blocking the light as we know. <laughs> no. um, Let's see. Uh, there we are. We've got the shadow off of there. So, can you all? Um, no, I think we'll, we'll 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 manage. I think I think we're okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Wrong one. <laughs>